Well, hello everybody, and uh, welcome to the Carter Cutlery Table. My name is Murray Carter. Many of you would know that, and for those who don't, um, I spent 18 years in Japan when I was uh, from 18 to 35, learning with a 16th generation Yoshimoto bladesmith. I'm now the 17th generation Yoshimoto bladesmith, and uh, my assistant, uh, who is just uh, off getting coffee, Taylor Shields, he will be the 18th generation Yoshimoto bladesmith. So, uh, explain that uh, continued lineage component. Uh, so, what you're looking at here, all these knives, what makes them very unique is that each one of them is laminated. It's like an Oreo cookie where uh, you've got the filling on the inside and the chocolate wafers on the outside. Each of these blades has a carbon steel core. You can really see, you might tell them, yep. you can you really can, see yeah. where the core material yep. begins. And then, and then the outer laminates are 410 stainless in most cases here. So the 410 stainless is relatively soft in terms of uh, steel goes. It does not it does not harden when the blade is quenched, only the core hardens when it's quenched. Wow. So you have a core of approximately Rockwell 64 as tempered, 67 as quenched, 64 as tempered. But because the 410 stainless on the outside is very soft, it sharpens easily. Even though the core is harder than most conventional steels, when you go to grind, the secondary edge, in order to thin the blade down after many repeated sharpenings, the whole blade thins down more easily than a homogeneous blade does because the outer laminates are that much softer. So we say that the laminated blade with the carbon steel core and the stainless outer laminates is like being able to have your cake and eat it too. Uh, strong, durable, amazing edge retention, really fine cutting, and yet is easy to sharpen. That's kind of the holy grail of cutlery. I would actually say, I don't know if they can hear me, but I would actually say that Ryan Swanson literally kept reiterating those thoughts. I mean, you definitely ingrained it in him, and did he learn that from like an apprenticeship with you? Is that? Yeah, yeah, Ryan and, and I and, and his brother Derek, uh, we go a ways back. They first came over to Japan with me on one of my guided tours, probably six that. or seven years ago. So we all spent 10 days in Japan traveling around, wow. you know, in the same rental car and uh, visiting different blacksmith and bladesmith shops, different factories, and then, you know, having hours in the car together to reflect on what we saw and to just, you know, talk about what was, you know, what were important steps in creating really high performance cutlery and the whole issue of maintenance of high performance cutlery because best knife in the world, once it's dull, if you, if you can't sharpen it, it's it's really a useless knife at that point. Okay, so, so let's talk about this beautiful work that's down here. <laughs> some of this is made by yourself and some of this is made by people you've trained or all of this is you? That's right. So uh, while I've made almost 30,000 knives over the past 33 years, uh, I started training apprentices about uh, seven years ago how to do the same work that I do using the same forge, the same steel, the same water quenching bucket, same rotating water stones, the same grinders. And uh, while there were a lot of uh, growing pains and some bumps in the road, we've really uh, finessed or uh, perfected our training system now with uh, an employee handbook and guidelines and benchmarks and standards and uh, we're so successful now with our Muteki apprentice program which lasts for three months for the apprentices before they can go on and start making their own knives. This knife here was made by uh, Taylor uh, and he's uh, my right hand man, shop manager and to be 18th generation Yoshimoto bladesmith. But you can see the, uh, the quality of the forging, the fit finish, the symmetry, you know, everything is really outstanding. And uh, now, and the first thing that I noticed for me yeah. is maybe more the saber style edge versus the standard. I mean, this is an outdoor knife per se. That's right. I and mean, so you, you really do cross different lines. You don't necessarily just do kitchen cutlery per se. That's right. You yeah. teach just basically edge, edge uh, 
We, we focus and emphasize on practical using knives. Okay. So actually this big knife would probably be a little bit out of that domain. That's kind of why it's kind of special and uh, kind of featured as a, more of a display piece, as is this one here as well. But the neck knives over there to the right, you're right. And I'm, to, loving, I'm loving this neck knife concept. We're just, yeah. We're ready to go at a moment's notice. That's right. You never need when, you never know when you need to uh, cut the stem off of the rose, right? <laughs> So yeah, the apprenticeship program's been immensely successful. Applicants uh, apprentice with us for three months and then they get tested and they have to submit five finished knives and they're checked on their geometry, their symmetry, their metallurgy, their ergonomics, their uh, aptitude and their attitude. And if they make the passing grade, they get to start stamping their, their blades with the Muteki mark on one side and their own personal mark on the other. So this is a Muteki by Adam. This is a Muteki by Chloe, Oregon's only female bladesmith. Wow. This is a Muteki by Ryan. So each of the Muteki bladesmiths have their own stamp. So uh, it's been an immensely successful program and now we're gonna implement it. The perfected program is now going to be implemented in our brand new Council Idaho Carter Cutlery Shop, which is going to be our second location. I was just going to ask how many locations you have, and, and yeah. home is where? Where's the main facility? Hillsboro, Oregon, which is just west of Portland by 20 minutes. Okay, so how does a person go about purchasing your cutlery? Is it always directly from you, or is it there are outlets, different uh, websites that represent yeah, your product? Yeah, we have a, a handful of uh, dealers who have uh, worked closely with us over the years. and uh, I know I've been on your site yeah. personally, and I know Ryan, as a, a district cutlery, That's carries right. some of your product. That's so right. they're just kind of scattered in those boutiques. Uh, shall I mention them all? or? I mean, you know, if you want people to know where to get your stuff and yeah. buy some of it, yeah. maybe they're watching. Well, the it's always good to support uh, DC Sharp in, uh, in Washington, D.C., Good to support Rodriguez Butcher Supply in Texas. I love him. Yep. Love him. And a Coutelier Nola in New Orleans. And uh, uh, Lorenzi in Zurich, Switzerland. I've never seen it. I'll have to go check it out. Yep. And uh, those are our main dealers. And we have dealt with others in the now, past as well. Now, you were mentioning um, your people learning metallurgy. So is this, I mean, are they making steel? Or are we actually like putting stuff in a cauldron and mixing it all up and making metal at your place? Yeah, so initially during the three month apprenticeship for the Mutiki Bladesmiths, we have them, in order to master the fundamentals, they stick with the white steel 410 stainless laminate. As they progress, after they graduate and after a year of making knives independently, we, uh, uh, based on their performance and kind of recommendation by the other bladesmiths, they're eligible to start making Damascus steel. Okay. Yeah. So basically, 15 months from the day they start, if everything's gone really, really well, they can be making Damascus steel and, and, and experimenting after the fundamentals of just laminating two pieces of steel together, then we can start doing things like welding fish hooks together or Harley Davidson motorcycle chains. But I noticed you have a Damascus here today. Yes. Is that by one of the apprentices? No, uh, none of the Damascus represented here today is by the apprentices, it's all by me. Okay. Yeah. We really appreciate you taking the time. This was definitely not a dull moment. And uh, you guys don't know who this guy is, this guy is you should. He was very generous to give us the time today at the booth. We hope you have a great blade show. We look forward to coming out and visiting your place and learning a lot from you. You have too much to teach. It's mind blowing. It's amazing you're able to house all that information in there. Yeah. We're glad that we're able to purchase a work of art by you, someone who's been making these for so long. We appreciate that. Okay, so guys, check it out. If you don't know who these people are, definitely go give and collect one of these. Yeah, and uh, my most recent book here is called How to Make Money Making Knives. And if you're interested in, in the uh, cutlery industry and uh, 
don't want a, a, your, uh, your, your partner or wife to be upset at you for spending more money than you ever earn on the hobby, check out this book and maybe make a dollar or two. So just let them know, I'm gonna have a link in the description. Great. Okay, so if you guys can see me, I'm gonna have links to all of this. There's no way that I want you to miss out on any of this. We'll have a link to the book, a link to the different places to buy this. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you for letting us All right, do this. take care. Stay sharp. God bless. Bye.